Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're having a good week. Um, the Katie Taylor Chantel Cameron rematch was yet another example of a close fight that people insist on saying it's a robbery. You know, Cameron clearly won that fight because. You know, the judges were biased or Cameron was doing work and the crowd were cheer weren't cheering, whereas they were cheering Katie and so on and so forth. Look, whatever excuses you want to construct in your mind in order to, you know, create a bias towards your fighter or just because maybe you just like to be contrary and you just like to have a go at, you know, you just like to try and bloat your own importance up and, you know, pretend that this is a robbery. This was in no shape or form a robbery. It was a close fight. A close fight. And I'm going to break it down as an example of a close fight. I'm not, I mean, I'm going to talk about this fight round for round, but this type of, this way of doing things can apply to so many other fights that are close um, but are called robberies because, you know, of some idiotic conspiracy theory that festers inside the minds of these people who've just got to have something to bleat about, okay? So, initially, when I scored this fight, I scored it live, watching it live, and I did my review, oh, five or ten minutes after the verdict, because I always do my reviews that way, because I think that's the only way to do it. I think, you know, your initial reaction is a very good thing to document and then afterwards you can say well you know what maybe I maybe I got that wrong or oh I didn't think of that or you know but this time round I watched it again obviously knowing the result I scored it 94 96 96 94 to Katie and I scored it again and I scored it 96 94 to Katie Taylor I don't know if I if the rounds were the same because I threw my piece of paper away from the first fight. But I'm going to read you some notes that I made um, after each round. Because when all is said and done, in, the, in this case, it's 10 two-minute rounds. So that's 10 individual little battles. Okay, and I thought I'd just make a few cursory notes as I went along to kind of try and illustrate how a close fight can go either way. Okay, So in the first round, Here's my notes. Speed from Taylor, good jab from Cameron, uh, from Cameron. There was the controversial moment where Katie looked like she'd been floored by a jab, which I thought was a genuine knockdown at the time. In actual fact, um, if you watch it back, if you watch replay, Cameron was treading on Taylor's foot as she landed the jab. Now, had she not been treading on Taylor's foot, definitely a knockdown. But as... As that, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, it, at the very least, it would have pushed Taylor across the ring, the jab. It may not have floored her. But the fact she was standing on her foot means the referee is perfectly entitled to say no knockdown. OK, so with that in mind, I gave that opening round to Katie Taylor. OK, so one nil to Katie. Round two, I put here close, much closer round. Again, the Cameron jab was good and she was stronger, clearly physically stronger, more imposing. Um... But Taylor, of course, quicker. Uh, we saw this great deal of speed in the first round, and she showed a bit more of it in the second round. Much closer round, but I edged it to Katie Taylor 10-9. Just edged it. Could have gone either way, but I edged it to Katie. Round three. Um, again, the speed of Taylor was keeping Cameron from resetting. So when Cameron started her work, Katie would fire a flurry, maybe spin out, and Cameron would have to reset. And Cameron's jab wasn't consistent. It, it was good when it landed, but it wasn't, you know, she the way that you negate speed is with timing. And of course, the, the one I always, the fight I always think of is the first Vernon Forrest, Shane Mosley fight, where Forrest completely nullified, um, you know, the speed of... Uh, of yeah, Vernon Forrest. He, what the fuck? My mind's got. My mind is fucking gone to shit. Um, Shane Mosley. Yeah. 
Sorry about that. I just had a sort of brain fart there. Um, yeah, Vernon Forrest in that first fight with Shane Mosley completely negated the the speed of Mosley with the jab, with timing, I should say, and the jab combined. Um, and I felt that Cameron wasn't quite doing that. Not quite. The thing about the third round was, of course, there was that bad cut because there was a clash of heads and there was that huge gash on top of, of uh, Cameron's forehead. I didn't think it was deliberate in no shape or form. Um, but, you know, it was a rough and tumble fight and Katie being the shorter, smaller woman, getting in close, the heads could well clash. Uh, the third round, I gave to Taylor 10-9. Okay, so she's 3-0 up, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Round four, Cameron was aggressive, a lot more aggressive, and I thought her aggression had more, um, well, it had better results. It was a better a better case of uh, a more constructive type of aggression. Um, and I gave her that round. I gave Cam uh, Cameron that round. So it's 3-1 to Katie. The fifth round, again, Cameron with more effective aggression, getting in close, roughing up Katie, Trying to, you know, it's kind of negating Katie's speed a little bit with the, the physicality. So another Cameron round. So 3-2 to Taylor after five. Number six, round six. Taylor, busier and speedier. So Katie got some rhythm going. And suddenly the hands were flying and the speed again, giving Cameron problems. You know, she couldn't quite get the timing of that jab right. So I gave Katie that round to make it 4-2. Round seven, a close round. Taylor, stick and move, but Cameron did land heavy. She landed the heavier shots. But I thought Katie's speed and quick, again, the quickness, it, it, landing the flurries and moving out. Yeah, you could have gone for Cameron on the, he, on the weight of the shots, but I gave it to Taylor. I just thought she did a little bit more. Again, could have gone either way that round. Could have done. So that's uh, what we got now. Fugula. Five, yeah, five, five, two, we're gonna, yeah, five, yeah, five, two, five, two, after seven rounds. Round eight, Cameron, very imposing, and was busting up Taylor on the inside. I thought this was probably Cameron's best round, round eight. Um, it's a bad round for Taylor, definitely a 10-9 for Cameron, no question. And at this point, you're thinking, two more rounds to go. This is going to be heavy for Taylor. Taylor's ahead, but... Cameron coming on strong. Very, you know, and bear in mind that she had that really awful cut on the forehead. I mean, Cameron showed a lot of metal in this this, uh, this fight, which is overlooked. Um, so round nine, a, a swing round. I thought Taylor's speed was possibly the main factor. Maybe. Again, another close round. But I gave it to Taylor. I just thought she did a little bit more. The speed and the punch picking was just a little bit better. Uh, and in round 10, Cameron, very physical. Taylor, incredibly game, but I thought the physicality, the weight of shots, edged that for Cameron. Okay? So in the end, I had, let me top this up, make sure I got it right now. Taylor, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 5, 3. Six four, six four in rounds to Taylor, ninety six to ninety four. That's what I had it. Now that it, that is a breakdown of a close fight. I don't want to hear this crap about a robbery. Okay, oh you know she was using the head too much. It was deliberate. You know, shut the fuck. Do you, do you even do you even watch boxing if you come out with that shit? If you're saying, you know, Cameron won, that's absolutely fine. But talk about punches landed. Talk about you know. Don't give me some crap conspiracy theory. Talk about why you think Cameron won. Talk about the technical stuff. You know, a close fight is not a robbery. You know, if you want to see a robbery, you can go and uh, go and have a look at Taylor versus Catterall or Sonny Martinez against Campbell Hatton. That's one. And um, I was talking to Mark from Unrivaled a few days ago, and he mentioned one I'd forgotten about. I went and watched it again. And I, I, yeah, he's right. One of the worst decisions you'll ever see. Uh, Gabriel Mestra, was it, against Mik Mikhail Fox? Fox completely outboxed Mestra. I mean, Mestra won two rounds at the very most, over a 12-rounder, and it was a unanimous decision. S surprisingly enough, 
Mestre is from Venezuela, and it was a WBA-sanctioned fight, and of course that's Venezuelan-based. Look, I'm not big on on uh, conspiracy theories, as you know, but something like this, okay, it was Katie Taylor in Ireland, but look at the fight, break it down. A robbery would be if Cameron totally dominated from start to finish and Katie maybe won one or two rounds. That's not the case. You, I've twice watched this fight and I've given Katie a 96-94 victory. If you think it was a draw, as one, one judge thought it was a draw, you know, which is fine. If you thought Cameron won by a point or two, I ain't got a problem with that. But what I'm sick of hearing is everything's a fucking robbery. It's just bullshit, you know. Anyway, my thoughts. Tell me what you think. Maybe you completely disagree with me. That's fine. You want to be respectfully disagreeing. I ain't got a problem with that at all. But it's when people talk crap, I can't stand it. You know, give me a reason. If you think Cameron won, just give me, give me a proper reason, a sensible, you know, intellectual even reason or something with a, something with a little bit of intellect to it. Don't just talk a lot of shit about conspiracy theories and all that crap. I'm sick to death of conspiracy theories. All, the modern world is just full of this crap. Um, I blame the advent of the internet. I mean, I'm not just talking about boxing either. I mean, people just seem to live in some fantasy world. Anyway, I'll stop my rant there before I really get going. Uh, comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the like button. And, of course, thank you for your time as always. I do appreciate it. I'll catch you later. Bye for now.